Good evening church and welcome to our online Bible study. I hope you've had a pleasant week and I hope that you've enjoyed our teaching on the theme that we've had this year which is God Restores. I want to thank everyone for the weekend, how you took time to celebrate my birthday with me and all your well wishes, all your WhatsApp messages. Thank you so much. I really felt your prayers and I really felt your support and your encouragement. Today as we get ready to study the Bible together, I want to share a scripture with you to just remind us of why we come together to share the word of the living God. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4 is a scripture that I want to share with you today. Jesus in Matthew 4, 4 said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. What is God saying here? Well, Jesus was saying here that we were not designed to survive on physical food alone. In fact, God created us as spirit beings and we have a soul and we live in a body. So we are triune beings. There's three parts to every one of us. You are a spirit, you live in a body and you possess a soul. So if you feed your body, you must learn to also feed your soul and feed your spirit. Now, when we come together to share the word of God like this every Wednesday, we're trying to feed our spirit and our soul. We're trying to make sure that our minds, our intellects, our wills, our emotions are fed by the word of God. But more importantly, we're trying to feed our spirit as well so that we can become strong and healthy spiritually. That's what we do when we take time to study the word of God together. So as we prepare our hearts to study today, I want you to know that you are doing this in obedience to Jesus who said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Hallelujah. So let's bow our heads and pray as we get ready to hear the word of God today. Precious Father, we thank you so much for your kindness and your goodness towards us. We are grateful for your faithfulness, for your mercies and for your loving kindness that is continuously over our lives. We ask you today to instruct us in your word. We ask that you open our eyes so that we may see, open our ears so that we may hear, and open our hearts so that it might be receptive to what you're going to be revealing to us today. We ask that our time in your presence today will be fruitful and uplifting for each one of us here today. And we say that our time of worship will be accepted in your sight. Thank you so much for hearing our prayers in Jesus name and God's people said Amen. Well why don't you stand up and join us as we worship the Lord together today.
Oh, Father, we just give you praise. We exalt you. We magnify you. We give praise and glory unto you. Yes, Lord, we worship you. We magnify you. Father, we thank you for another opportunity to gather together this evening to study your word, to meditate upon your word. We thank you, Father, Lord, because we know that you will speak to us. Father, we thank you for your anointing present in this place. Anointing to speak your word, to teach your word, to preach your word, and anointing to receive your word. Ears to hear, Father, Lord, and perceive that which you are saying to us. Father, as we study your word this evening, we say, speak to us, Father, Lord. We humble ourselves under your mighty hand. We say, Lord, we want to hear you speak to us from your word today. Father, we thank you and we honor you. We magnify you. We give all praise and thanksgiving unto you. Be exalted, Father Lord, in our garden today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, you are welcome to our online Bible study. And I thank God for the opportunity that, we have, that I have to be able to share the word with you today. So let's just get right into it. I hope you have your Bibles, your notepads, and, you know, ready to listen and to study the word of God together. Well, let's please open our Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 17. And we're going to be reading from verses 1 to 10. And I just was warning you today, we have quite a few scriptures to go through, but I'm sure you're going to enjoy yourself. So yes, 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 1 to 10. And it says, And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Hare, As the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain this year except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. Verse 5. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and stayed by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. That means he obeyed God. He obeyed the instructions that God gave him. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. And it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, Arise, go to Sarepath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Sarapath, Sarapath. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. And if you read further down, you find out, of course, the widow fed him. The point of this scripture is, if you notice, God told him where to go to be fed. God told him to go to the brook cherry and he will command the ravens to bring him food. Amen? Most of the time, God leads us and guides us to where our provision is. Actually, all of the time, if you look at the word. Can you imagine if Elijah had decided, well, I'm not going to brook Cherith. I'm going to another brook. Let's say, you know, somewhere else. Brook, you know, Rose. Even though God wanted to feed him, he had to be where God led him to be. So God, we need to find out where our own there is. Where is God leading us? Where is God guiding us for our provision, for his plan and what he wants for us? Amen? And if you look this, also, when he, after a while, the brook dried up and the word of the Lord came to him. You know, sometimes God leads us, he guides us, he gives us some instructions. But we stay there, we don't look for another instruction, we don't wait for another leading or another guidance. We just think this is it, we camp there. But when it was time to move, the word of the Lord came to him again and instructed him on what to do. Amen. So this evening I want to talk to us about God opening our eyes to see as he wants us to see. Amen. If God will restore us, we need to be able to hear him and obey be his instructions and that comes as we spend time in his word in his presence in prayer and also in being sensitive to the leading of the holy spirit not just one leading but the constant leading of the holy spirit thank god we have the holy spirit living in us so we have to come to a place where we depend on his leading and his guidance so we can see as god wants us to see amen so we can you know so the holy spirit can give us insights 
that we would not naturally have or perceive. You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 to 12, let's read. He said, For as it is written, I have not seen, nor hear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Amen. So God has things prepared for us. God has plans he has made for us. He has made plans for our provision. He has made plans for our health. He has made plans for our family. But I have not seen or hear heard. Amen. Verse 10 says, But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all the things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of a man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Amen. So there are some things that we just will not be able to perceive naturally. We need the high of the Spirit. We need that insight from the Holy Spirit to be able to see the things that God has for us, the things that God wants for us. You know, God has given us so much, but if we cannot see it or perceive it, we're, going not, we're not going to enjoy them. So those things are there. Just like that we read about Elijah, to, God told him to go to Brook Cherry. If he had gone somewhere else, he'll be wondering, where is my provision? But if he hadn't gone to where God told him to go, he would not have had that provision. So we need to know what God has for us so we can have what he has for us. Amen. We need God to open our eyes to his plan, his provision, his protection, his direction. There are a lot of things going on in the world. There are a lot of things in the world. But we need God to open our eyes to see the things he wants for us and where he has it for us. We need our spiritual eyesight to be open to see as God sees and to see what he has for us, to see beyond the natural things that are happening around us. Amen. And that comes when we spend time, when we, you know, in the presence of the Lord, when we ask God to open our eyes to see as he wants us to see. I'm just going to share a few, you know, stories in the Bible where God opened the eyes of people to see what normally they would not have seen naturally. Amen. The first one is about God's provision. Let's look at Genesis chapter 21, and we're going to be reading from verses 15 to 19. Genesis 21, 15 to 19. Let's start. And the water in the skin was used up, and she placed the boy under one of the shrubs. This is talking about Hagar. If you remember in the Bible, Hagar had a child for Abraham, and Abraham and Sarah had to send her packing because of some things that, you know, that's not what we're talking about today, but just to give you an introduction. So let's, uh, let me start from 15 again. It says, And the water in the skin was used up, and she, that's Hagar, placed the boy, her son, under one of the shrubs. Then she went and sat down across from him at a distance of about a bow shot. For she said to herself, let me not see the death of the boy because you know they were hungry there's no water so of course the boy was at the point of death and of course neither so was she so she sat opposite him and lifted up her voice and wept and god heard the voice of the lad then the angel of god called to Aga out of heaven and she, and said to her what hails you Aga? fear not for god has heard the voice of the lad where he is Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him with your hand, for I will make him, make him a great nation. Verse 19. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the skin with water and gave the lad a drink. Amen. See what God did there. God opened her eyes to see the well. Amen. God opened her eyes to see provision. You know, may the Lord open our eyes to see his provision for us, where our provision is, what he wants us to do. You know, there are lots of ways to make money, but we need God to open our eyes to see where our own provision is for us. Somebody investing in a, in a, um, in a business might work for them because that's where God wants them to invest in, but it might not be for me. So my prayer is God will open our eyes to see where our own provision is. Amen. May God open our eyes to see his provision for us. Not just, you know, physical provision, spiritual provision, natural provision, material provision, financial provision. Every provision that God needs for us to 
you know, that God has for us to be able to be sustained. May the Lord open our eyes to see it in Jesus' name. You know, God can open our eyes to see things that we didn't even begin to see before. You know, sometimes a business might come up and you think, nah, this will not work. No, this will, no. But God can open our eyes to see where our own wealth is. Amen. You know, the Bible says in Philippians that God will supply all of our needs according to his riches in glory. And he can show us where that provision is. Amen. Another way that God can open our eyes is in the area of direction. We talked about provision. God can open our eyes to see provision and he can also open our eyes to see his direction. Let's look at Numbers chapter 22. And we're going to read from verses 22 to 35. I didn't tell you that we're going to be reading a few scriptures. Amen. So let's start from verse 22. It says, Then God's anger was aroused because he went, and the angel of the Lord took his stand in the way as an adversary against him. This is talking about Balaam. Okay? He was on a mission. Okay, so this is talking about Balaam. Uh, verse 22 again. Then God's anger was aroused because that Balaam went. And the angel of the Lord took his stand in the way as an adversary against him. And he was riding on his donkey, and his two servants were with him. Now the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with, it, with his drawn sword in his hand. And the donkey turned aside out of the way and went into the field. So Balaam struck the donkey to turn her back onto the road. See, the donkey was trying to get him to go somewhere else because the angel of the Lord was with, with a sword. But, you know, the donkey, the Balaam, of course, didn't see it. And, of course, you know, he was trying to get the donkey to still turn back on the way he was going. Verse 24. Then the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path between the vineyards with a wall on his side, on his side and a wall on that side. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she pushed herself against the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall. So he struck her again. You know, it's amazing that the donkey can see the angel of the Lord, but a prophet can't. Verse 26, Then the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place where there was no way to turn either to the right or to the left. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she lay down under Balaam. So Balaam's anger was aroused and he struck the donkey with his staff. Then the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey and she said to Balaam, What have I done to you that you have struck me these three times? And Balaam said to the donkey, Because you have abused me, I wish there was a sword in my hand, for now I would kill you. He didn't realize that the donkey was saving his life. Verse 30. So the donkey said to Balaam, Am I not your donkey on which you have ridden ever since I became yours to this day? Was I ever disposed to do this to you? And he said, No. Then, amen, the Lord opened Balaam's eyes. Amen. The Lord was, the Lord opened Balaam's eyes. And he now saw the angel of the Lord standing the, in the way of his, in, the, in his way with his drawn sword in his hand. And he bowed his head and fell flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord said to him, Why have you struck your donkey these three times? Behold, I've come to stand against you because your way is perverse before me. Why? Because he wasn't going the right way. He was going the wrong way. The donkey saw me and turned aside for me these three times. If she had not turned aside from me, surely I would also have killed you by now and let her live. And Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I did not know you stood in the way against me. Now, therefore, if it displeases you, I will turn back. And that's with 35, the angel of the Lord gave him the directions. You know, Balaam is riding a donkey and is going in the wrong direction. He's going in the direction that the Lord does not want him to. You know, sometimes in life, we too can be like that. We can just be just, you know, it might, you know, we might have a good intention, but it's still not the right direction of, of God for us. But, you know, may the Lord open our eyes to see the right direction that he has for us and he can thank god i mean this is not just the old testament where the new testament we have the holy spirit in us to lead us and to guide us so may the lord open our eyes to see the direction that he has for us that if we're going the wrong direction maybe if we're doing what we're not supposed to be doing we're going where we're not supposed to be going that the lord will open our eyes to see the direction that he has for us amen you know we need to know the will of god for our life we need to know, like I said, the right direction. God knows how to open our eyes to what is right for us, to his will for us, to his plan for us. 
and we just know what is the right thing to do and what is the wrong thing not to do amen we will know that this is the way that we need to go amen so we've talked about provision direction now we're going to talk about God's protection amen God can open our eyes to see his provision and his direction and also his provision let's look at second Kings chapter 6 and we're going to be reading from verses 15 to 17 let's start he says and when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out there there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots and his servant said to him alas my master what shall we do okay just to give you a background this was when you know Elisha was surrounded by the army because he had you know of the king they came to attack him so of course the servants went out and saw you know the chariots and the horses and he went in and said alas my master what shall we do I mean it's like it's two of us there's a lot of them what are we going to do so he answered do not fear that's Elisha for those who are with us are more than those who are with them I'm sure the servants must have been thinking, I don't know what you're talking about. There's just two of us and I can see there are thousands out there. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Amen. May the Lord open our eyes that we may see. You know, there's a lot going on around us right now. But God can open our eyes to see that despite the circumstances, what we have going on for us is better than what is going on out there amen so let's read verse 17 again it says and elisha prayed and said lord i pray open his eyes that he may see then the lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw <laughs> may the lord open our eyes and we too will see amen i just love that and behold the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around elisha amen you know, the prophet prayed for God to open the servant's eyes. And when he prayed, the servant looked at the same circumstance, amen, that he had seen before and he saw something else. May the Lord open our eyes so that despite everything that is going on, despite the circumstances, we can see as he sees. It's because of the, the we don't see what God sees that we can even be afraid of anything that we can fear. That's why uh, Elisha said to him, fear not. When you see what I see, you stop fearing. May the Lord help us to see from his word what we have going for us so that we will not be afraid, so we will not fear in Jesus' name. You know, when God opened his eyes, yes, they were surrounded by the enemy, but he saw with his spiritual eyes chariots and horses of fire that were descending from God's mountains. God had dispatched angels to deliver and protect Elisha. And God also has protection for us. Amen. May the Lord open our eyes to see our own protection. That we know that the COVID might be going on, there might be financial hardship, but God can open our eyes to the truth of His word that we know that we are secured. Amen. We need God's protection. If ever there was an hour we need to pray for God's protection to keep us from evil, is this hour. There's so just so much going on. You know, the devil wants to use this opportunity to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But we're going to have our eyes open to the fact that we are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And when we know what the word of God says about protection, our mind is set. When we read Psalm 91, God will give us understanding and revelation of the protection that he has for us. And we can decide, fear not, I don't have to fear for they that are with us are more than they that are with them in Jesus' name. God can open our eyes to the protection of the Lord. Amen. So we've talked about provision, direction, and protection. Now let's talk about God's presence. Amen. Let's look at Luke chapter 24, verses 28 to 31. Then they drew near to the village where they were going. And indicated that he would have gone further. This was when you know Jesus had died and now is resurrected. And of course, this that some of his disciples were walking on the road and he joined them and they were talking as they were going along. So let's start again from verse 20. He says, Then they drew near to the village where they were going. And this is Jesus indicated that he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is fast spent. And he went in to stay with them. So that means he's been with them. They've been talking and, you know, 
just thing like we say along the way now it came to pass as he sat at the table with them that he took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them then their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished from their sight you know jesus may be right in front of you walking with you and sitting down with you at every meal and your eyes could be restrained from seeing him because we're so preoccupied with what is going on we therefore should pray that god will open our eyes to see jesus as he is has been with us all the time to see his power to see his glory to see what he has done for us amen may the lord open our eyes to a fresh new visit visitation of jesus christ to see jesus as our provision our direction our protection to see jesus as everything that we need that we jesus has paid the price that even in these times we can live a life of victory amen we need a divine fresh visitation you know, to say we, love, we want the power of God that so that we can see the future without fear. Amen? That we can have an encounter with God in this time. That God can open the eyes of our understanding to the hope that is before us. That despite everything that is going on in the world, we have a hope. We have a future. Amen? We have direction. We have provision. We have everything that God can provide for us. Um, <clears throat> let's look at Ephesians chapter 1 verses 17 to 18 and I'll be reading from the Amplified Version. It says, For I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, and Amplified says, of insight into mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of him, by having the eyes of our hearts flooded with light so that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you and how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints he set apart once you know like i read in um, corinthians that god you know god has so many things that he has prepared for us that he is the holy spirit that reveals those things to us so we need to pray that god will open our eyes that we will see the inheritance that we have in him that we are not going to be so preoccupied with everything that is going on around us that it blinds us to the glorious things that we have in God. You know, Paul's prayer was that through a spirit of wisdom and revelation, the Ephesians would come to know the Father in a deeper, more perfect way than they had before. And that's what we need right now, that we will come to know our Lord God in a deeper and more perfect way than we have had before, that God will renew our knowledge of him so that when things are happening all around us we know that we have provision we have direction we have protection in the lord our god amen and we also have a wonderful relish fellowship and relationship with the lord that we can always run into his presence and say lord i need you restore me amen that we're not so preoccupied with everything that is going on around us and i pray that we start seeing things through the eyes of our lord not just the eyes of what is going on in the world Amen. Amen. I just want us to pray right now concerning everything that we've shared. I've talked about God opening our eyes to provision like he opened the eyes of Agar to the well. Uh, let's pray that God will open our eyes to his direction that will not, you know, that will not be misled, especially with everything that is going on around, around us. That Lord will open our eyes to his protection, to what he already has for us. And that also God will open our eyes to the divine, his divine presence. We have the Holy Spirit in us. Amen. We have so much going on for us that God will open our eyes to those things that are fresh in the mighty name of Jesus. So let's just pray. Father, we just thank you and we will magnify your name. We thank you so much for the wealth of the inheritance that you have given us. And we just pray, Father Lord, this evening that you will open our eyes, just like you opened the eyes of Hagar to provision, that you will open our eyes to the provision that you have for us, that you will open our eyes to the direction that you have for us, that we'll be able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit leading us, guiding us, and helping us in our lives in the name of Jesus, that we'll be able to open our eyes to the power in the blood of Jesus, to the power 
in the in in the things that you have provided for us the power in your word the power in the things that jesus has done for us in the mighty name of jesus father we thank you that we will not be blinded and be preoccupied by everything that is going on around us but we look to you to open our eyes for insight father lord for understanding in the mighty name of jesus father we're just going to i'm just going to pray that prayer that we, I just read in Ephesians. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, will grant us a spirit of wisdom and revelation of insight into mysteries and secrets in the deep, intimate knowledge of Him. That our eyes of understanding will be flooded with light so that we can know and understand the hope to which He has called us and how rich is His glorious inheritance to us. Is set up past once in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you and we honor you. We magnify you. We give praise and glory unto you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I really trust God that you've been blessed with the word today. Thank you so much for partaking in the Bible study. Thank you. Amen. Well, we've come to the end of the service. Like I said, I hope you had a lovely time. I did. Um, just, well, just want us to now honor the Lord with our tithe and offering this evening. And I'm just going to read from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. And it says, Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. Then it will fill your pants with grain and your vats will overflow with good wine. Amen. So let's just honor the Lord this evening. And I know that God is faithful, that the rest that we have, God will bless it. Amen. And it will go farther than we even ever thought it would in Jesus' name. Amen. And all the ways that we can give is going to be on the screen. And thank you so much as we continue to generously give to the work of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now please let's share our confession. I trust God for a year of unusual elevation. I will humble myself daily and stay radically committed to God's word, God's will, and God's ways, no matter what. As a result, I will shine brighter and brighter and reflect God's glory every day and in every way in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you very much for joining us today and God bless. See you next time.